if this was Atari Man and you're listening to Two Dudes in a Nest. Hey, Justin. What's up, man? You want to go on a boat ride? I always am up for a boat ride. What about, like, a speedboat with a gun on it? <laughs> a gun on the front of it? Yeah. Yeah. That shoots ping pong okay. balls? Yeah, it shoots little ping pong balls. Mm-hmm. And also has, like, a, a f- little helicopter blade. Attachment. Or not blade. Yeah, but, uh, it comes uh, out of the, the center of the boat and yeah, takes yeah, yeah, off yeah. with you. One of those. One of those. Can you? Do you think you can hook us up with that boat? I think I can. You talking about Cobra Triangle? Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm talking about Cobra Triangle. Yeah. All right. Before we talk about this game, have, have you seen the commercial featuring the Ness? Uh, wait. The uh, talking about Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fruit Loops. Yeah. So it's a couple of adults eating some Fruit Loops and playing Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, we're not talking about. We can't talk about Fruit Loops until they sponsor us. Well, speaking of sponsor, I like the shirt you're wearing. The hot sriracha shirt. Hot sriracha. I like that it says "Shake Well" on it. Uh-huh. You got to shake your sriracha. Making is that how, making sure is that how you pronounce that? I'm I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, also before we get started, we have a guest. Yeah, I guess we should introduce him. Yeah, it's my brother, Matthew. Hey guys, what's up? A member of the Cobra yeah. Kai. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we invited him on. He's a member of the Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah. You know. They made the bad guys sound really cool in that movie. They gave them a name that was really cool. The Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Is that their fighting style? Isn't... I thought Kai was like a... Like a group of karate members. Oh. Like a... Yes. Like a... Like a gaggle of geese. Oh, okay, yeah. A Kai of karate... <laughs> a Kai of members. karate guys. <laughs> We need Kai of Karate Guys. Yeah. I feel like we'll probably get corrected on that. Yeah. Well, we'll see. People don't like to correct us for some reason. I guess they just like us. Yeah. It, well, it, it's changed. At first, it was like everybody wanted to correct us. And then we called everybody out for <laughs> trying to correct us. <laughs> and now us, everybody's and like, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Right. That's, I guess it's because we're jerks. A couple jerks. <laughs> and our game yeah. is terrible. Yeah. All right. That's an inside joke for last week. Yeah. All right. How about some history? How about some history? Getting history? Let's do some history. It is now time for Justin's historical tidbits and trivia. So. George Washington was the founder of our country. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> going way back. I'm going to start with the founding of the country and get to. Actually, this was developed by a red coat company. Oh no! Yeah, Rare is a British company. Yeah, so we got it's another Rare game. Mm-hmm. How about that? Right, so we're doing another Rare game. Uh, so this game was developed by three guys named Mark Betteridge, Chris Stamper, and Tim Stamper. Didn't we go to high school with a Stamper? Yeah, we went to high school with a Nick Stamper. I wonder if he was related. Probably. Mm-hmm. That's why he liked video games so much. Yeah, his uncles because are... his. Whatever. Maybe. His uncles are over in the UK making video games. Mm-hmm. So. Right. So a little funny story about the creation of Rare. Uh, kind of trying to spread out these Rare stories because we're doing so many. Because Rare did like forty games, didn't they, for the NES? They did. A, they did a bunch yeah, for the so, NES. And th- one of the reasons we're doing the, this game this week is because Justin made us play Anticipation last week. I feel like Rare needed a. How dare you? Needed he needed Rare needed some retribution for that terrible, terrible game we talked about last week. How dare you? Um, so at a game, I'm just gonna gloss over that comment. Just continue right on. All All right. So at a gaming convention in 1985, the Stamper Brothers uh, proposed their work to Nintendo, and Nintendo was having some like killer cells at the time from a bunch of their in-house titles, so they were like, eh, not interested. Um, undeterred, 
Tim Stamper spent six months cracking the Nintendo code. At the next gaming convention, the Stampers arrived with a skiing game called Slalom, making for a better reception, and Nintendo bought the game, and there started their relationship with Nintendo. Um, so this game, Cobra Triangle, was released... Wait, 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 wait. So Nintendo rewards bad behavior. Exactly. Huh, so if you crack Nintendo's code and make an illegal game, Nintendo says, okay, yeah. here, here's some money, make more games. Right. Well, it's kind of like what David Crane said. Nintendo follows their own rules, and maybe they like, yeah. maybe they like rogues. Maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, this game released after the success of their previous game, RC Pro-Am also for a, a NES game, um, and it is very similar to that game in an isometric perspective, uh, whatever that means. What is iso... I know what isometric means in, like, working out terms. Uh, well, isometric perspective is not top-down and not from the side, but, like, from an angle. Mm. It's, like, in between. It's like when you do an isometric drawing of something, mm -hmm. it's it's you draw it so that you can show something that looks 3D in a 2D plane. Does that make sense? Ah, uh, okay. Like if you, well, of course I'm coming from engineering background here, but if you draw like a bolt, mm -hmm. you can draw it from the front, you can draw it from the top, you can draw it from the side, and then you draw an isometric to give an idea of what it's actually supposed to look like in 3D. All right. <laughs> All <right. laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it was released in North America in July of 1989 and in Europe in January of 1990, so about six months later. Uh, it received pos generally positive reviews from critics. Uh, all games, Skylar Miller described the visuals and control style as reminiscent of RC Pro-Am and the wide variety of missions' ability to keep the game fresh. Uh, games Radar ranked it the 16th best NES game ever. Whoa. Yeah, that's pretty high. That's that is pretty high. And the staff praised David Wise, of course, for his work on the soundtrack. Again, David Wise is brought up with his uh, very talented uh, renditions put into these uh, games. You know, We're going to have to try to get him on the show. Yeah, we talk about him all the time. We're going to talk about him plenty more, too. Yeah. So, uh, uh, anyway... So that's pretty much it for the history of this game. Um, not uh, just another rare game, you know, hanging out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Did you find this game, or did you have this game? It's time for Michael's quest to find the cart. Ernie Burr. I did not have this game. Uh, this game actually came from our buddy Nick Stevens. Mm hmm. I uh, whenever I. The story behind it is, whenever I bought my Wii U, I got the Skylanders pack, you know? And I don't like Skylanders. I think it's a money sink. But, Nick has kids. So I sent him the Skylanders part of my Wii U pack. I don't know what Skylanders and is. It's like a little monster kids. It's a video like... game where you, you they have this little portal, mm -hmm. and you set the you set actual toys on the portal. And they go into the game, and you can play as them. But the reason it's a money sink is because you have to buy all the little oh. toys to go on the portal. Yeah, and if you stand on the portal yourself, you can go into the game. Sweet. Mm. Kind of like, what was that? I don't know why Michael got rid of it. I think yeah. that's how it works, yeah. What was that Nickelodeon game, uh, show where you actually played in the video game? Oh, what was that? It's like Nick Arcade or yeah, something? Yeah, that was it. Know. Nick Arcade. It was awesome. You, well, that was the final mm -hmm, level, right? Or the final part of the. You had to beat all the other contestants by playing other video mm -hmm, games first, right. and then you went into the into your own game. That was cool. You know, show. Nickelodeon doesn't do game shows anymore, and they had a lot of good game shows back in the day. They should just re bring them back. Double Dare. They tried bringing uh, back Slime Time, or whatever it was, but it didn't Double do Dare? so hot. Double Dare. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Double Dare. They didn't do so hot. Double Dare was great. What was interesting about Double Dare is the host of Double Dare was like a neat freak. Yeah. But it was like a messy show. You remember that? 
Yeah, he yeah. Like, he hated. He was. He was like a neat freak. He hated getting dirty. And then the <laughs> show was all about slime Messes. and sliming people. <laughs> and walking, Did they ever slime him? Walking through ears with earwax and picking noses with big boogers. Yeah. I don't know if he ever got. I don't think he ever got slimed. That was probably in his contract that he never right. would get slimed. You know? yeah, what was his name? It was like Mark... Uh, Mark something. Wahlberg. Not Mark, Wahlberg. Mark, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> you. Was it Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. That's good stuff. No, anyways, I sent Nick the Skylanders mm-hmm. pack from my Wii U, and he sent me like four games and some, some ma- game manuals and a poster. It's pretty sweet. He also sent me a map. Like the the map that came with the original Zelda, yeah, but it was a there was one that had been like drawn all over and marked up by somebody, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So they got this next game from Nick Stevens. All right. So of the NES podcast, and which is not a Nintendo podcast, by the way, not a competitor, and Genesis Gems. So he does an NES podcast and a Genesis podcast. Yeah, but his NES podcast is not about the NES. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know what you mean. Traitor. Yep. It's a traitor. Uh, All right, how about the uh, how about the game? Well, I actually like this game, even though it's pretty repetitive. I don't think it's repetitive at all, really. I think it's very, it varies. I mean, every level is completely different. Well, yes and no. I mean, I guess you are just driving a boat the whole time. And I, I do take issue with this boat, and especially the <laughs> the the jumping on the ramps. Okay, it's an outboard engine. How are you jumping? You can't jump on ramps. Right. Yeah, you can't. You're just going to tear the ra- uh, ramp to shreds, and plus you're going to ruin your engine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who would design a boat like that with guns and a helicopter and then make it an outboard engine. Yeah, it needs to be a jet engine, like a jet propulsion. Yeah, so that you can that would make more jump sense. ramps mm-hmm. and a helicopter, by the way. And waterfalls. Did you get to that level? Yeah, that was where we got stuck. We couldn't make <laughs> it past jumping the waterfalls mm-hmm. because what's ridiculous about that level is the water current mm-hmm. will change in a completely different direction. I mean, yeah, from one foot to the next. Foot, Pretty sure that's impossible. I mean? I don't think that works in real life. No. I will, I will, it might, I guess. Technically, if you have waterfalls going off, falling off both sides. But I've never seen Has that, that ever, in real life. We need to, we need to, how we can test this theory. So you know how, like, Niagara Falls is like, the, the border of Niagara Falls is really torturous, I guess you could say. Torturous? Yeah, you know, it's not really, it's not like a straight line off of it. Yeah. You know, it's okay. curvy. Mm-hmm. And you, if you could, if you could like set in the middle in between the curve, where there's two different waterfalls falling on each side of you, uh-huh. the, then you can test see, that. See, theory. feel if it's pulling you both directions. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll put them in a barrel, like they used to do back in the I day. I feel like there's barrel. not enough of that anymore. <laughs> People getting in barrels? And yes. Going on waterfalls? Don't you feel like in the 1950s or 1960s, people were doing that all the time? Uh, I don't know if they were doing that all the time. I think when somebody would do that, it would get a lot of mm-hmm. notoriety. Yeah. Now we got some guy walking across it on a tightrope, but he's roped in. Yeah. I mean, Well, we got really safe for some reason. It's ridiculous. It's like, I mean... Yeah, he's a great tight rope walker. I'm not taking anything away from him. But he wanted to do it without the without being tied in. But the the television, CBS or whoever broadcasted it, was like, No, we don't want to just in case. We don't want to Well if it's gonna be live, we don't want to air a murder. Yeah, we don't want to <laughs> air a, a, a murder here or a or death, whatever. So uh they made him do it, but I just feel like that takes away from it. It does. I mean give me a couple of beers and I'll do it. Uh, if I'm wait. tied in, if I'm wait, tied hold in, my beer. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, hold my beer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Check this out. <laughs> Famous last words. Hey, wait. Is that the way your uh, grandpa? Was? Uh, well, he wasn't tied in. Yeah. He said, "Check this out." 
That's why he's <laughs> no longer with us. Right. He said, uh, I'm going out. So, again, about this boat. One more thing about issue. the barrel. Okay. <laughs> The, Why don't you just take you, over? Have, just go. Just take you over. Seen, just have go you on. seen the one with the like the woman, the first woman to do it? That she's like in a dress and like very daintily dressed. She just takes no. off over to the Niagara Falls in a barrel. So she lived. Yeah, she lived. Oh yeah. I know a lot of people lived, and then a lot of people died. Right. It was it was kind of a fifty fifty shot. <laughs> yeah. Those are good odds. About this boat. Talk, tell me about the boat. Oh, okay. About the boat. I just wanted to say, if the boat can fly, it kind of defeats the purpose of every mission that you do in this game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I agree. I mean, why don't you just fly? Yeah. I think it's, what is it, stage four? Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew, I think it is, where you yeah. run into the logs and there's like typhoons in the water or something. Mm -hmm. Or whirlpools mm -hmm. that drag you down. Right. Uh, and you got to make it to the end. Well, why don't you just fly flip? fly over the whirlpools? Yeah, just flip that helicopter switch and just fly over to the end. Right. No. Or when you're facing the cobra and his tail keeps like hitting you and stuff, why don't you just fly at his face? Shoot him in the face with a ping pong ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shoot him in the face with a ping pong. That'd ball. be annoying to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a theory about this this game though. Okay. Okay, it really doesn't have a story, right? Right. I think it's some kind of, like, contest. Mm -hmm. it's some kind of game show, sort of like American Gladiators or something, right? right? Because the first the first level's a race. Mm -hmm. Then the second level, I think, is the one where you have to transport the mines. No, that's the third level. That's the third level. The second level is you collect the pods yeah. jumping yeah. off the ramp. second level is see how many pods you can collect. And then the third level is the the mines, and then the fourth level is just make it to the end through the obstacles. Mm -hmm. And then you fight the snake or the cobra. Mm -hmm. Which I thought the, I thought that they brought the cobra out way too soon. Yeah, yeah they, they did. did. Yeah, He felt like a boss. Yeah, I was like, is this the last level? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah. I agree. So each thing, each thing kind of seems like you know, it's like an event. Mm -hmm. Something that this boat has been tasked with completing. You know? Right. Yeah, no. It's so like I think the, it's, I it's think the it's the boat some, Olympics. Yeah, it's the boat Olympics. Some crazy future. It's like twenty XX event where this guy gets put through. He gets put through the paces. You know, he gets. He started. They start him off easy with races. The next thing you know, he's he's got mines. He's shooting ping pong balls at snakes. Giant water yeah, snakes. It seems like a uh, Olympics that Vladimir Putin would really enjoy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Vladimir Putin would rejoice at these Olympics. <laughs> and if you, uh, what I like is the two different ways you can die. Okay, one you just explode. <laughs> yeah. And then another one you just sink. It's like, what's the difference? I guess. I, well, I, I was wondering how how do they each happen? Are they just kind of random? Well, you know, it's funny because it's like the what is it, the fourth level where the whirlpools are there, uh -huh. and that's what makes you sink most of the time. It's yeah. like they throw you, and then you get thrown, and then and then you sink. It's like you don't sink in the <laughs> whirlpool; you get thrown, and then you then you sink. It's just like yeah, the boat's sitting there, and it's just like, well, here we go, time to sink. <laughs> yeah. So is this? Do you think this boat has somebody in it, or do you think it's like a robot boat, or like a little RC boat, and it's being controlled by somebody? Oh yeah, yeah. It could be like yeah. a, could be like it could be RC Pro Am two basically. Well, there already was one. It could be like it, RC Pro Am. It's just boat. a spinoff boat it's edition. It's like the plane. It's like the movie Planes is a spinoff of the movie Cars. Yeah. Right. Is that the movie where the blow-up doll flies the co-pilot and... Uh... That's Airplane. Oh, no, wait, that's the Disney It's Airplane. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this game does feel a lot like RC Pro-Am, though. I mean, it controls very similar to RC Pro-Am. I'm going to go with these boats are RCs because you don't see anybody. Yeah. Right. It could be like an Inspector Gadget boat. Because it's got the helicopter... You know, go go shoot go go gadget balls. helicopter. Yeah, I, I I also have to take issue with the helicopter because 
Okay, the the rod comes up in the middle, and then this little bitty helicopter <laughs> comes up. And it's that like, would that would not lift <laughs> no, a boat. It's like <laughs> tiny. It's like almost like the little propellers that are on the beanie hats that nerds wear. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Bzzz. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see that lift in the boat. No. You know, also, if these were RC cars, that would explain why the snake is so big. Oh, yeah, because it would just be like a normal yeah, size snake. Yeah, just a normal size snake. The cobras don't so, swim. Well, the pond isn't deep enough because you see, you see parts of the snake mm -hmm. coming yeah, out of the pond. It doesn't have to swim. If these are RC cars, if you look, it just it, you got grass on each side of each level. It looks like some kid just dug a shovel yeah. and made dug a little moat. Set a cobra inside there. This makes a lot more sense. And start battling it with his RC. I think boat. we just figured this game out. Yeah, and the mines are just like water dynamite. Like we used to play yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And the little people are like little tykes people. They actually even look like little tykes people. Oh, that level. I forgot. <laughs> that level is one of my favorites. I'm glad you brought that up. Because you've got these little, <laughs> there's like eight people drowning in the yeah. water. And you're supposed to protect them. <laughs> yeah. It's, and the whole time, I, I, they, they would be, they, the other boats would come and try to drag them away. First, they would run them over, and then attach them to the back of their boat and like sort of drag them away. Yeah, I got a feeling that that's like, how are they dragging? Are they, are they wakeboarding behind the boat away? <laughs> I don't know. They're just yeah, they're just sitting there holding them on the handles, and the boat comes by and picks up the rope. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> No, no, no! You're not taking that. But I love. You would think that. <laughs> hey, you know what actually is probably happening? Those boats are coming to rescue the drowning people, and you're there to make sure they drown. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, you must drown. Although that will, if that's the true theory, that's going to ruin one of my trophies. Oh, okay. Don't want to show my aunt too early here, but. Okay. All right. I love though when you get the mines. And you're trying to get them uh, back to the detonation spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the boat's like chasing you. He's like, nope, 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 nope. Give me that mine. Give me that mine. <laughs> give, give me that mine back. <laughs> hey, there's another part. You're, you, you're a bad guy in this game because those mines are just sitting there, not bothering anybody. Hey. You're trying to go over and blow, blow them up. Exactly. Those guys are just trying. They're like, no, no. Those will blow up if you take them over there. <laughs> so, yeah, we figured this game out. It's It's a... You're the bad guy in this game. Yeah. You're like, what it is, you're, you're driving an RC boat. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, these, there's, a bunch, there's a bunch of kids out driving these RC boats, just having a good time. Right. Like the first level, right? Everybody's just kind of racing, having a good time. And then this punk kid comes <laughs> yeah. in, who, who is you, the player. A teenager. And you come in, you start... Yeah. You bring your boat in, you start shooting all the other boats with ping pong balls. <laughs> They weren't bothering anybody. They were just r driving their boats. Yeah. Then the you know then the second level, of course, is you're just by yourself, but you're stealing everybody's pods mm -hmm. in the uh, second level. Did, speaking of pods, did you notice the more you collected, the faster your boat went? Yeah. Yeah, well, we, got, we didn't figure that out until yeah. a while. <laughs> but you can't go too fast, or you get shocked. Lest you be shocked. Yeah. Um, what is a pod, though? Well, it's a it's a show where people talk. Right? Well, yeah, I know about do stuff. Do. These pods that you collect in the game, like what are they? Well, if it's an RC, if you're driving an RC car, then perhaps it's battery pods. Could be. It gives you some juice for your boat. Mm -hmm. Pods that uh, store pods usually store stuff, right? That's what I think when I think of a pod. Yeah, storing batteries. Peas in a pod or fuel. These may be uh, gas powered. Maybe these are uh, gas powered boats, the little gas pods. Maybe. Or they could be like the uh, gain laundry pods, like you put in your laundry. Yeah, you gotta do some laundry when you get done. Yeah. And this whole RC He's... thing helps me better understand something that I didn't understand was the skinny rivers that you're <laughs> traveling upon. Right. See? Makes sense. Right. Everything makes sense now. Yep, we we just figure these games out on show, on air. I know, we just crack the code, right. as usual. Mm -hmm. I feel like Rare has different codes, too. More codes. 
figure Maybe they'll give us a job now that we crack their code. Yeah. I don't know if Rare's doing anything anymore. Do they still do stuff? Well, I know the Stampers left in 2007. Yeah. Well, Microsoft bought them out, and then they just kind of disappeared. Well, that's kind of what Microsoft was doing. I was watching the show the other day, actually, about when Apple... It was that, It was about... Uh, it was the, the the 90s show that National Geographic's showing. Uh-huh. And they were talking about how, you know, the, the comeback of Apple when Steve Jobs came back. And how Microsoft invested $150 million into Apple. And they're... Uh, but I think they were talking about how Microsoft does everything in their own self-interest. And they did that to kind of create a competitor because of all the antitrust lawsuits that were going on. They're like, look, yeah. oh, we have a competitor, it's Apple. <laughs> knowing knowing that, very well knowing that Apple would not take over. Hmm. Anyway, that's a sidebar. Nice play, Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Nice play. And now they're, they got rare, and they're like, we're just not going to let you guys do anything. Yeah, they kind of <clears throat> um, hurt Nintendo by doing that, I guess. They took a stab at Nintendo, because Rare was mostly making Nintendo games for the longest right. time. Even on the N64 and stuff. Right. And then Microsoft buys them up, and then Nintendo no longer has Rare. Stop it. Right. And then here comes the Xbox. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. He may, uh, David Wise... Uh, great job as usual. I just want to say the music. The music in this yeah, game is really good. Yeah, it really was. Makes me want to go out on. You know, it's like you know those ski boats that have the speakers on the on the yeah. bars. You want to listen to this music when you wakeboarding. Hey, that'd be that'd be a good idea. Drive the boat, pumping this music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody else on the lake be giving you weird looks. Like, what is? What are they listening to? Is that some kind of new techno? Dance mix. Most people be uh, super nerds. How'd they afford a boat? <laughs> Most people would be like, "Oh yeah, that's the that's the music from Covertron." Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be hilarious. Only probably only in uh, certain circles of friends. Mm -hmm. Right. Very few. Because I got a I've got a feeling that even if. I heard this music before this week. I'd be like, "What is that?" Yeah, I'd probably know that know, it was like an it was an, an, an NES, you know. Yeah, and I could maybe, uh, I could maybe figure out that it was a David Wise tune because he has kind of a style. Eh, that'd be kind I of. I don't know. I, but that would still be kind of pushing it. I don't know. I would not have picked out. You're no Aaron Hickman. Hickman. No, I'm no Aaron Hickman. Mm -hmm. So. David Wise should probably come out with an album or something. He should. Wise Greatest Hits. Yeah, Wise's Greatest Hits. Or just new music from David Wise. <laughs> yeah. It'd be awesome. Maybe he has. 8-bit classics. 8-bit classics. David Wise's 8-bit classics. Mm -hmm. Why does... Yeah, we need to get a hold of this guy. I could hear it on... on I could hear it on a... On a not an 8-bit. On a... On a commercial, like an infomercial that comes out at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Has the scrolling right. uh, words, you know, and like the tunes will pop Music up. Music to each game. Yeah. David Wise's 8-Bit Classics. Three easy payments of 1995. Jeez. Easy payments. Easy payments. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah, they're easy payments. He has a website. And the picture, the first picture that comes up is him playing a saxophone. Oh. So nice. apparently he's uh, also a talented musician. If you wish to contact me, here's his email. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. Uh, I'm seeing an interview in the okay. future. Okay, we'll get on it. He has a blog. Um, yeah. Be sure and drop our be sure and drop our other buddy's name on there so he knows that we're not so he knows we're legit. David Crane. Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark Wahlberg. No, David Crane. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, the uh, family guy where he's like, uh, the, the next movie of Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg's confused 
And he's just standing on the street corner going, what? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I was actually listening to, uh, I was actually listening to the Crack podcast, and they were talking about him the other day, uh-huh. and how he gets. Well, they're just kind of talking about how these actors kind of get typecast because of what face is the is their most attractive face, or, or something like mm-hmm. that. And they were just talking about how Mark Wahlberg, he looks the best when he looks confused. Right. So he always plays these roles of these people who are not as smart as everybody else. Which is a good, which was good that he played that in um, that M Night Shyamalan movie, the uh, the happening, the happening, which was a yeah. terrible movie, but just as confusing as everybody watching it, he was confused in the entire movie. Yeah, you can relate to him because nobody knows what's, what's going happening. On. What's going on? Yeah, the happening. What's happening? Mm-hmm. The happening. It sounds like a uh, Albert. Uh, what is it? Who's those two comedy guys that did the Who's on First thing? Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, Laurel, I guess that's that. That sounds like that. Mm-hmm. What's happening? The happening. What's happening? The happening. When? Get it. Mm-hmm. Get it. So David Wise right. <laughs> uh, was the house composer to Rare from 1985 into that to 2009. So he's no longer that. Although on his website, the he has a song that that plays there at the first, and that's the Wizards and Warriors theme. Oh, nice. I love that. He's very proud of that. He's very proud of his work on Anticipation as well. Just want to throw that out there. (laughs) I don't believe you. I do not believe you. Not all about that. Oh, boy. He did Will of Fortune and Jeopardy, too. Well, he did everything, I I suppose. Yeah. But that's just cover songs there. Double Dare. We were just talking about that. He did music for Double Dare? Well, the video, the NES version of Double Dare. Oh. You don't seem that impressed, Mike. Oh, sorry. I'm lo- I was trying to look up the manual because I forgot to look up the manual. Yeah. Well. So I'll see if I can find it real quick. Well, let me say it again and maybe you'll get a better response. He did the music for Double Dare. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we just talked oh, my about God. Double Dare. <laughs> Oh, man, that's incredible. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. Okay, I got the manual. Do it. Uh, let me just read you what I usually read you, the object of the game slash game description. Put your skill and reflexes to the test at the controls of a highly modified Cobra-class speed boat. Push it to the limit on every level where you'll, where you'll race against other boats, avoid treacherous whirlpools, battle deadly sea monsters, and protect a group of helpless swimmers. Increase your boat's performance by collecting pods, which will allow you to upgrade your speed and firepower. 25 stages of high-speed river running action await you. Wow, 25 stages. Yeah, we didn't make it very far. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> we made it maybe seven. Yeah. Uh, and there's all, the precautions, you know, don't uh, don't clean with benzene, paint thinner, alcohol, you know, avoid <laughs> touching the connectors. This is a high precision game. It should not be stored in places very hot or cold. Does it say so this, this is, is a high precision game? Yeah, it says this is a high precision game. Nice. So do the level? My question is, do the levels repeat? I guess they eventually start repeating, yeah. right? Right. Which huh. seems to be when the reviews of this game, when I was reading the reviews of this game, it's like the main complaint was the repetitiveness of this game. Yeah, I don't know. You get about eight or nine very different levels, and then it starts repeating. Yeah. So. And you, I, I I agree with you guys though. They pulled the snake card way too soon. Yeah, they did. It should have been the last of the re- right before it started repeating mm-hmm. the snake. Right. Or for me, I think it would have been cool if they just if it was only ten levels long and you just played it over again. You just restarted mm-hmm. instead of you know. Right. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. Any final words about the game? I felt like the game played really well. Like the controls were really sharp. Yeah, I agree. Like, I mean, when you hit the button, it does exactly what you want it to do. Yeah, and I mean, it's really sensitive too. It, it's true. really hard to get used to, or it was for me for the first few minutes. It was like, whoa, running into the sides. Well, I felt like 
I feel like the game went from super easy mm-hmm. to extremely hard yeah. pretty fast. Right. Like, levels 1 through 3 were, like, really easy. We breezed through them. And then level 4, we kept dying and dying mm-hmm. until we figured out that once you die, just keep going because you can get through the whirlpools. Right. You got the bl- Here comes the my favorite part, the retrofitted trophies. Yeah, right. going on. So just go. Kind of like in Mario Brothers when you, like, lose your your fireball thrower and you're, like, invincible yeah. for a few seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I'm confident in this game. I think it's a good game. <laughs> if it's not expensive, then buy it. Sound, if it's expensive, then maybe hold. You sound it. like a politician there. I stand. I stand <laughs> by this game. It is a this. Th- this is Cobra Triangle, and I approve this game. Well, so let, as far as cost of this game on Amazon, new inbox sealed, ninety four ninety nine. Oh, used. One penny. All right. <laughs> All right, then. i definitely say buy this game. Yeah. If this game is the same price as Anticipation... Which it is. Which it is. Then buy this mm-hmm. game. Did, did Rare Don't, just flood the market with their games? Is that why they're so cheap, I guess? I guess they did. They did sell a lot, so yeah. they must have... So I guess. They must have produced a yeah. lot of games. But if somebody bought it way back in the day and then never opened it... It's now worth ninety five dollars, which means it's worth about thirty dollars more than it right. was. Right, because they were they were what about sixty dollars back then. Right, which is actually more than sixty dollars today. So it's probably not even worth as much as it was back then. So <laughs> congratulations, you played it. You didn't. You you kept it for no reason. <laughs> kept it unplayed for no reason. Yeah, you lost money. Oh, well. on your investment. So. How about uh, how about some trophies? All right. Did you come up with any trophies? I did. You want to hear my first okay. one? Go, you go, you go one. I'll go one, then we'll make Matthew do one. We'll make Matthew do one. Did Matthew? Yeah. Matthew may have prepared some. He may have. He I looks have prepared. A feeling he didn't. <laughs> Over there in his tank, <laughs> nice. in his tank top. Uh, Don't be hating. My first one is Hasselhoff. Eat your heart out. And that is save all of the keep all the people safe from the boats. Oh, all right. Because he was a lifeguard. Right. Nice. Uh, my first one is bow nose boating. Oh, you stole my second one. Go ahead. <laughs> Does steal your actual words? No. Too? Okay. Well, I know what it's going to be. Mine's bo- bow nose boating, and that is a. Uh, Zigzag the mines to their destination because that's the only way you can keep from getting the mine stolen from you. Right on the mine level. Well, that's neat that we thought of the same one. Because you know, Bojacks and zigzags and tech. Right, you guys are so simpatico. We are. Yeah, that's us. Two peas in a mine was the name of mine was. uh, Is that Bo Jackson driving this boat? (laughs) Nice, (laughs) but yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Alright, Matthew. Um, riverboat gambling trip. <laughs> collecting the most pods, or collecting so many pods. Okay. okay. Riverboat gambling trip. You got another one, Justin? Well, uh, mine was Tom Arnold, look at this pod collection, and I was collecting all the pods. Collecting all the pods? Mm-hmm. Wow. Tom Arnold would be impressed with your pod collection. Mm-hmm. I didn't have another one. I just I I, I felt like I I peaked at bow nose boating. <laughs> you were so excited so. about that one. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Matt, you got another one? Hmm. No, not really. What about? I'm just thinking of this one. How about uh, uh, what do they call those guys in India? Snake charmers. Yeah. Beat the snake. That's not a good <laughs> Beat one. Beat the snake. That's not a good one. That's not a good one. <laughs> throw, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, actually. At the snake. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Beat the snake. <laughs> oh, boy. We could call that an entirely different trophy if we wanted to. But maybe we this should is a family friendly not, podcast. We need to just not only on Cobra Triangle do we beat the snake. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so <laughs> how about a rating? Oh boy. Okay. A rating. What are we gonna do for a rating? Type of snake. I thought we already did type of snake. Have we? We've we've done type of snake. We did that from Metal Gear. Yeah, that's right. How about type of boat? Body of water. <laughs> or body, body of body let's of Let's do water. body of water. I like body of okay. water. Great. Great. That's gonna be great. <laughs> Who's gonna start us off? Uh I'll start us off. Okay. I'll start us off. Uh I'm gonna go with uh Child Made Moat. <laughs> Because that's what I feel like the the waterways of this game are. A, mi a child made moat being it's raining, and for some reason you're letting your kid play out in the rain, mm -hmm. in the mud, and he has a little shovel and he just makes his own stream in your grass, and probably gets in trouble afterwards. But he makes some channels of water to flow through the yard and puts his boats in. I feel like I did that when I was a kid. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, Loch Ness Lake because the I feel like it was a play on the Loch Ness monster. This game was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Plus, I don't, I don't really know how to make that a rating. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was kind of struggling. But Michael didn't make his a rating either, so I'm just gonna go with it. Do we ever really make these? A no, rating? they're just ways for us to. Make fools of ourselves? I don't know. Yeah, we just we just relate random topics to the game mm -hmm. somehow. Right. That's our that's what our rating typically is. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go for for my rating I'm gonna go with side of the road gutter river. You know, like <laughs> when it's raining and there's a river going down the side of the road. Okay. Cause I, I don't know. Road drainage. Yeah, road drainage. I mean it was it was a decent game, but I don't know. A, it was it, it was definitely repetitive. It's just a gutter. Oh, <laughs> Matthew says it's an okay game, but it's no better than a gutter. Right, <laughs> right. It's a gutter game. I feel like this game would be is fun, and I had fun playing it this week. But <sighs> it wouldn't be a game that I'd like to play all the time. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's not like your Super Mario. You're not gonna break it out. Once a week, or, or Tech Mobile, something that you know that you're going to actually, pl or Punch Out, which we've had another. I, I got another email request for Punch Out. This makes like 45 requests for Punch Out. Mm -hmm. So, I just thought I'd throw yeah. that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get the Punch Out. We're gonna have to just. You know what we punch should do? Out. We should we should call John on the show, put him on the spot. Like, when are you gonna be able to record this Punch Out episode? Or we should just start recording a punch out episode and just call him. Yeah. Like, hey man, you got you got time to talk for about forty five minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, for the listeners who don't know, John is a friend of ours who's a big punch out fan. And when we were doing the show Retro Thought Pod, he wrote like this essay scathing article <laughs> on Punch Out that was like Incredibly long for what it was, but it was really good. Uh, and we have to get him involved in this because we. So it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're trying to we're trying to sync schedules up. Yep. So when we sync right, that schedule, about, uh, yeah, we yeah, we will get to punch out as soon as possible ASAP. I hate it when people say it. It's in it's in the chamber. Well, you know what I what hate? ASAP. I hate ASAP. I hate, I hate both of them. I'm just throwing that out there. Well, why did you How about use some feedback? ASAP if, you, if you hate ASAP? I don't know. Kind of like when I'm I no use better the ESPN than, I'm, joke. I'm no better than every, anybody else. I'm just trying to relate to the people out there. You hate there. yourself when I'm I use no, this joke. I'm no better than you. I say ASAP. I'm a hypocrite. That's what it is. I'm just a big, stinking hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Right. I love how you just agree with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You are. No, mm -hmm. you're you're it. I get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. How about feedback? Let's do it. We should start with feedback from Jeff Upel. Okay. Because he called us last week, and I forgot to play it. Ah. And then 
And then he sent us a tweet saying, hey, you forgot to play my feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel bad. So we're going to start with All right, do it. All right. So be quiet. Hey, this is Jeff Dupol leaving a message for the NES dude. You called me out on your podcast, and you said I left you hanging. So uh, I'm just going to have to give you a call and say, hey. And also, what is a black box game? This is uh, news to me. You could enlighten me and the rest of the world. I don't want to look up on the internet. I want to do this old school, 1980 style. I'm leaving a message. Okay, well, uh, it's been fun doing this while I'm at work, walking around in the ghetto. Also, it's Jeff Uphole, not you pole, so you guys can do whatever you want with it. You're the masters of the NES. Goodbye, good luck, and may all your dreams come true. Goodbye. <laughs> How disappointing. What? How disappointing. His name's Upple. Oh, uh, no. Did he say he was walking through the ghetto? Yeah, it's his job. Is he a drug dealer? <laughs> <laughs> his Jeff. job is walking through the ghetto? <laughs> Jeff. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's a police okay. officer. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe he's a postman. Could be. Could be a postman. Could be. Okay, okay so a couple things in that call. He wants to know what a black box game is. And maybe that's just something we call it, but... I think it's an official I call the black... name. Oh, is it? Well, a black box game is the initial release when the NES system came out, and the first, like, what, 10 or 15 games that came out. They came out with a black box. They were all uniformly designed, where they all looked the same as a black box, and the art on the box was a picture from the game. It was actually sprites from the right. game. And so they... I think they came to be called black box games. Yeah. The, ga the game, the cartridge itself is not black or right. anything. But the box art. Now, if it was a Tengen game, it'd black. be black. Yeah, but no. Tengen didn't have black box. Right. Black boxes were all made by Nintendo, I think. Or at least published right. by Nintendo. Officially, yeah. And it was like an official, uniformly designed cover case. Yeah, All right, so Jeff. There you go. That's what a black box game is. There you go. Thanks, Jeff Upple. Yep. Now we can't call you Upple anymore. That's all right. He's a big fan. I'll, I'll live with it. Yeah, that's good. Cool. That's cool. All right. Uh, there's just a couple of things on Facebook, too. Not much. We didn't get a whole lot of Facebook feedback. All right. Uh, Jay Jorgensen says, Spy Hunter Sings I'm on a Boat. Yeah, this is kind of like a cross between Spy Hunter and RC Pro Am. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. And then Brian Taylor says you drive a boat in Spy Hunter Two, or Spy Hunter T Two, as in T O O, like also. Right. I could never make it that far in Spy Hunter. I don't think to drive the boat. And then Eric Purcell says Cobra Attack of the Joes. Oh, wait. Wrong game. I guess he's... <laughs> is that like G.I. Joe's? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Matthew liked it. <laughs> 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 and then Brian Taylor also said, One of the best games for the NES. Proud to say that I have beaten it without cheating. The ice world is by far the hardest. We did not make it to the ice world. I did not make it to the ice oh. world. So, more power to you, Brian. Can you use your helicopter in the ice world? Because boats really, especially with an outboard motor or whatever, they don't really go on ice. Yeah, but I feel like this game has already broken those rules. Yeah, this game's kind of broken all the rules. All the, the boating. All the boating rules. <laughs> all the rules of boating. The unspoken rules of boating have been broken. All right, and one more piece of feedback that I would like to make an announcement about is. I think I've tallied I've tallied the numbers, and we have two honorary dudes. Sweet. To People can probably guess who they are. One of them called into the show today. Uh, so Aaron Hickman, 
and Jeff Upple are now honorary dudes. All right, dude Hickman and dude Upple. Dude. Dude. So congratulations, guys! You are honorary dudes. If you will send me an email at nesdudes at outlook dot com. I will send you a list of Steam games. I hope you use Steam because that's the only the only prizes we have to give. But I'll send you a list of Steam games, and you can have a Steam game for being an honorary dude. 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 Yeah, pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So awesome. We have two honorary dudes, and we have a couple. We have a couple people that are on the fringe too. So so keep up the feedback and keep up being awesome D patters. Yeah. There's a couple more yeah. feedback things I wanted to get up. Oh, well, why didn't you say something? Well, I mean, I was waiting on that you. That was going to be the coup. That was the coup de gras of the uh, feedback. Well, I mean, the honorary I could just dude ceremony. It out, I guess I don't know. No, no, bring it up, bring it up. You just, you just really screwed up the whole honorary dude ceremony. I did you not. Have to do it really I did fast, not. okay? <laughs> you have to do it really fast, like at the end of the drug commercials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Aaron Higman said, "I would love, I would have loved a crazy hybrid of Cobra Triangle and RC Pro Am." Kind of feel like that's what this game did. Yeah, Nick, <laughs> me too. Nick Stevens said, uh, "Can't wait to hear how Michael found this cart." Throwing out a hint. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Philip Vaughn said, "Houseboat with the nest hooked up for both." Okay. You didn't read. You didn't read the status message he was commenting on. Yeah. Would you rather? Uh, yeah, the status message. <laughs> okay. God. Not only am I screwing up the order here, I'm just screwing up the way we've, we've done this. So, would you rather a leisurely summertime boat ride or a crazy game of Cobra Triangle? That's what. And his answer was houseboat with a nest hooked up for both. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah. Yeah, you see, get it. Thank you. How about and then we do have a joke from none other than Jeff Eppel, honorary dude. I like my steaks like I like my cobra triangles. Rare. <laughs> nice sigh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. See those. Fi- the reason I didn't I didn't see those feedback when I was looking it up because I looked up on our event. And I was looking for feedback on the event. You're trying to steer people only to comment on the event page, right? Trying, trying to do that because it makes it easier on us. But you know, whatever. Yeah. The honorary dude ceremony was just not as special. Yeah. Although t- two of the feedbacks that came post ceremony were from dudes, so right. Jeff and Aaron, so that's okay. Right. Dude. Dude. Did you watch Girl Meets World last night? No, I keep forgetting. Are you DVRing it, at least? I need to get on that, yeah. No, I'm, not. I'm not, but I need to get on that. Yeah, you do. The DVR yeah. part of it. You do. Is it getting good? I've seen two episodes. That's it. That's all there is. So. Far. Oh, well, then I've seen all of them. Uh huh. Nice. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think I feel like they're doing it like uh, doing a um, kind of homage to the way Boy Meets World started out. So, yeah, a lot of backstory, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, well, I don't want to ruin it for Michael, but I have a few things to say eventually one day. Okay. Good say. I want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so, you might ruin it for everybody. So. In the cl- la, do you la, think la, 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 that the la, classroom la, la. is just way too unorganized? When they're in the classroom, uh-huh. there's no way Corey would stand for that. What are you talking about? Like he's like teaching and they're like all just doing stuff while he's teaching. Oh, I know. Yeah, he's not a very good. That bothers not me. Not a very good teacher. Feeny would be no. Yeah, mm-hmm. Feeny would have Feeny's... smacked his ruler on the desk and be like, <laughs> "Look, guys, yeah. I'm teaching." Yeah. You know, that's one of the things about Feeney, the evolution of Feeney. is like Feeney was like the strict, hard, you know, teacher at first, and then he became like this sweet father figure. That's because he got old. Yeah. Feeney was in the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. But, hmm. yeah. 
Welcome Spoiler everybody alert. to Girl Meets World. Yeah, no, we just kind of we just kind of went on uh, with a couple of little girls, mm-hmm. Justin and Maddie. <laughs> Justine and Maddie. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna go get a monster biscuit. You made me want one. Yeah, cover it in gravy. That was actually really good. Mm-hmm. We can't talk about this until we get Hardee's to sponsor us. Carl's Jr. Or Carl's Jr. Girls, well, for us, it's Hardee's. Hey, I had a uh, I had country ham biscuit this Those morning. are good. They got a good country ham. Mm-hmm. It's, they're just the right amount of too much salt. <laughs> I'm not sure that makes sense, but okay. Just the right amount of too much? Yep. <laughs> I'm standing by it. That's my story. Did I'm you put any sriracha on it? No, no, I'm saving the sriracha for my shirt. You put it on your shirt? Yeah. Hey, uh, if anybody's wondering what we're doing, I think we're just trying to make sure we get to an hour. We're like 55 minutes right yeah. now. So. Mm-hmm. What are we going to talk about next week? Well, that's a good good thing you bring that up. Next week, we're doing a top five. Right. But we're doing a, a cool top five, one that everybody will enjoy. Mm-hmm. Top five... Jobs held by Mario on the NES. Yeah, because Mario did a, he did a lot of things. He wasn't just a plumber trying to save the princess. He did a lot more than that. So we're going to do a top five jobs held by Mario. Mm-hmm. Should be fun. So there won't be any noises for next week's game coming up. Except Sorry for to anybody who's waiting for maybe that. you should like record you plunging a toilet or something. <laughs> 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 this is the sound for next week's game. I could just get uh, our special guest soundboard Mario to come on. Oh, yeah, he probably talk, will come And back. talk at the end of the he show. He probably will come back. It would be funny if, you know, like, you just hear, like, the plunging toilet, and all of a sudden you hear, oh, Mamma Mia! Mamma Mia! <laughs> <laughs> He's just, like, working. <laughs> He's, like, grunting. And... <laughs> it's a me! It's a me! <laughs> Uh, and then what? the week after, cooking show. Cooking show? <laughs> yeah, I thought you guys were going to do a cooking show. We're doing a cooking show? Yeah. Hmm. We've already... <laughs> yeah, okay. We've already done short order, Matthew. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh-oh. Matthew doesn't listen to the show. No, I do not. In case anybody was wondering. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we've said I'll... this before, nobody... In our circle of friends or family, <laughs> listens to our show. Yeah. So. In my defense, I wasn't born when any of this stuff was happening. It's true. He's born in '93. I think the Super Nintendo was already coming out at that time. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, we're you were coming close on Nintendo 64. The 64 came out in '96. Yeah. yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. So when I was old enough to play video games, it was the Nintendo 64. Exactly. Yep. All right. Hmm. Good show. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our website, nesdudes.com. Of course, always give us five-star reviews. On, or uh, I'm not going to solicit. Just give us a review on iTunes. We haven't had one in a while. Yeah. If, you do a, if you do one, we'll read it on the show. Please don't call us jerks. <laughs> or tell us our game is awful. Yeah, don't tell us our game is bad. Yeah. We're still waiting on some more reviews on the app, too. Yeah. So if anybody wants to review the app, that'd be great. All right. All right. Here comes nothing. <laughs> Here comes the toilet flush. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye. Bye.